So welcome to this prenatal accessible flow. I'm Debbie Stengesser. I'm joined here today by Chirong, Ariana, and Emily, who are all really amazing mamas to be here at Yoga Source in Los Gatos. We've got Eric Maciel on the camera. So this practice is meant to be a super accessible flow slash restorative prenatal practice. It's appropriate for all stages of pregnancy and all levels of practitioner. So if you have any questions on whether you should be doing this, definitely consult with your physician or your provider, but it should feel good on your body. So always listen to your body and your breath. We'll start seated. If you're practicing along at home, you might wanna have some sort of pillow, couch pillow, or folded up blanket so you can prop your seat up. We'll also use a block or two yoga blocks. And also if you're home, you can use some books stacks of books work as blocks as well. So we'll start seated, close your eyes if it's comfortable. And just take a few rounds of breath to settle yourself into your seat and notice how you feel. And take an inhale to roll your shoulders up around your ears. Roll them down your back and exhale through your mouth all your breath. And do that two more times. Shoulders up around your ears as you inhale. Roll them down your back and exhale through your mouth. One more, breathe in. And breathe out. And as you inhale, sweep your arms up alongside your ears. As you exhale, join your hands and bring your thumbs down to the center of your chest in Anjali Mudra, connecting your thumbs into the center of your heart. And take this moment, this opportunity here to create an intention or dedication for your practice today. And really use this time, this opportunity to listen inwards. Notice how it feels inside, any sensations from your baby, from your breath. Just create an intention that will best support you in this moment. And we'll take one more full breath in here together. And exhale completely. Release your hands to the tops of your thighs or your knees, palms flat. Slowly flutter your eyes open. And take an inhale to reach up through your chest, lengthen through your spine, and as you exhale, just let your chin drop towards your chest. Inhale here, and as you exhale, let your right ear come to your right shoulder. And then inhale, bring your chin back to center. And exhale, let your left ear come to your left shoulder. And inhale back to center. And just take a few more rounds like that, just beginning to link your breath to your movement. If it's comfortable, you can keep your eyes closed. Breath is full and deep. And just releasing any tension from the sides of your neck your shoulders. One of the things, the aspects that makes vinyasa yoga different from other physical practices is just this innate connection awareness of moving with your breathing. So just in this more simple motion, begin to connect your breath to your movement. Next time you inhale to center, slowly lift your chin back up. Reach your arms back up alongside your ears as you inhale. As you exhale, take your right hand by your side. Place your palm flat. If you need to, you can place the block underneath it for more support or come up on your fingertips. Take an inhale, lengthen through your side body, and then as you exhale, just a gentle lean up and over to your right. Try to spread your fingers, lengthen through your arm, and then relax your shoulder down away from your ear, creating space through your right side body. Try to rotate open through your chest and then breathe into that length that you're creating. Nice, ladies. Take one more full round of breath here. 
As you inhale, come back up through center, push off that bottom hand, reach your arms up, spread your fingers. As you exhale, take it over to side two. Left hand down, you can place a block underneath if you need or be on your fingertips. Take an inhale to lengthen and as you exhale, just a soft release. Try to keep that length. You can spin your palm down so the shoulders in external rotation. That's it, Emily, good. And then breathe in and out to create space through your right side. And then inhale, come back up through center. As you exhale, release your arms by your sides. And then take your arms out to the sides as you inhale and open up through your chest. And as you exhale, let your hands come down through center and draw in. And just take a few like that, just opening through the chest as you inhale, just a really gentle lift through the heart. And then as you exhale, let the hands come through center, kind of rounding through the spine. And we'll just do that a couple more rounds, creating space, kind of like a seated cat-cow. Gentle lift of the chest. You can close your eyes if that feels good. And on the next one, we'll keep the arms out by the sides of the shoulders and we'll do what we call cherry pickers in prenatal yoga. So we'll exhale the palms down and inhale the palms up. And we'll do this for as long as we do, can to feel the burn. We're in Northern California in the summer and there's a lot of cherries to be had. We're actually, as we're filming this, missing all of the farmer's markets that sell all the cherries. But we did this in my pre and postnatal yoga training in San Francisco with the mama tree guru, Jane Austen. And she makes her students do this for probably about like six minutes to create shoulder strength for holding the baby. <laughs> also to create and prepare for the strength that we need to bring baby into the world. So if you like, you can close your eyes. You can speed it up a little bit. If you need to take a break, those of you practicing at home, you can always pause, put the hands down, and then join us when you're ready. So everything, everything in this practice is a suggestion. Breathe full and deep. Are we feeling the burn? Just a little burn. <laughs> These ladies are athletes too, so they're, they're used to the burn. <laughs> Last 30 seconds here, you might slow it down and get into that slow burn. You might speed it up. You might think about the color of cherry that you are going to eat later. Maybe that doesn't apply to other states. Here in California, we have like the dark cherries, light cherries, we have like yellow cherries. Those are really good. Good, and then as you exhale, take your hands up onto your shoulders, like robot arms, and then begin to circle through the shoulders, release that. I went easy on you. Some of you I've never met before, so. <laughs> if I knew you better, we might go another minute. That's a practice in kundalini prenatal yoga of building tapas. We call it tapas practice, which creates fire, creates some sensation so that we learn how to work with that intensity, how to breathe into it. Go ahead and circle the other direction. Stay with your breath. And then if you wanna get funky here, you can go kind of like figure eight dance style all the dancing mamas out there. You can switch directions. And then on your next inhale, come through center, reach your arms up one more time, spread your fingers, breathe in. Exhale, take it down through center, hands to your heart. And then release your hands to your lap. Extend your legs out in front of you and just do a little shake through your legs. You can give yourself an easy massage if that feels good. Wobble through the legs and just release from some of that sitting posture, Sukhasana. Now we'll make our way onto our hands and knees. So if you like, if you have a blanket for those of you yoginis at home, you can take the blanket so that it's spread out to 
kind of a thin fold, and you can place that underneath your knees. If you're not used to having a blanket, you don't need to take one. There's no sensitivity. And we'll come into quadruped all fours position. So we'll take our hands outer shoulder distance apart, knees slightly behind the hips, lift and spread your fingers so you feel for your right in the center of your hand. Press into the tops of your feet. And we'll come through a few cat cats. So we're gonna eliminate the arch through this sequence. As you exhale, round your spine, draw your chin to your chest. And then as you inhale, just come through neutral. Let your belly come to neutral without arching too much. And then exhale, round your spine, chin to chest. Belly draws in. And then inhale, come back through neutral. Again, exhale, round in. Good. So you're just toning, navel center, and then inhale through neutral. So you want to keep that nice, natural arch of the spine in that neutral position. Take a few more rounds at your own pace. The reason we don't come into that kind of full cat arch position is just because we want to maintain stability through our core and through our midline as baby continues to grow. And if it's comfortable, you can close your eyes. Now on your next exhale, we'll send our hips back to our heels, finding this extended child's pose shape. And continuing that flow with breath as you inhale, rise up to hands and knees. Just a neutral spine, exhale. Press your hips back to your heels, finding that extended child's pose. And inhale, up to hands and knees. Keep going, take about three to five more rounds at your own pace. You can close your eyes, you can widen your knees as much as you need to so that you have space for baby. And then when you come up through center, try to keep that neutral spine so there's not too much arch. Nice ladies, this looks great. Spread into your fingers, just warming up through the hips and the low back. This is a really good one if you're having any sort of low back discomfort. And now on your next exhale, We'll settle back into this extended child's pose. You're welcome to take your block and place it underneath your forehead if that feels good, if the ground is far away, or if you'd like kind of more of a soft, relaxed shape. And then you can soften your elbows or you can extend your arms, whatever feels good to you. And just rest here for five, breath, five breaths, breathing into your low back. You can inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. So a reminder to our yogini mamas at home that this is meant to be an accessible flow. So anytime you feel like you need to rest, you can come into this posture of resting or you can always take a bolster under your back or pillow under your back and recline and just rest for the practice. So really listen to your breath. Everything is a choice. your next inhale, come to hands and knees and have your block nearby at the top left corner of your mat. We'll come back to that quadruped position. This time we'll take our hands up onto our block. Take an inhale here and as you exhale just step your right foot forward outside of your right hand coming into kind of this like half squat wide lunge position. And yogini's choice, you can stay with your hands on the block, you can lower the height of the block, or if you have the mobility and it feels okay on your hips, you can take your hands to the ground here. I like to be kind of somewhere in the middle on the block, and then we'll just make some big, juicy hip circles here. And take it around in one direction. My midwife friend who's also a prenatal yoga teacher likes to always remind mamas in the shape that this is a great place to give birth in or 
labor in. So it's a good place to spend some time in before. Just opening up the hips, releasing the low back. If there's a direction to your circles, you can take it around the other direction. And just stay with your breath. At any point in the practice, you can close your eyes as well. And just connect back to your breathing. And we'll come back through center. Take an inhale in center. And as you exhale, take your right knee back to all fours. Take your hands flat so you can move the block forward, palms to the ground. And just a few more rounds of those cat cats between sides as you exhale, round your spine, chin to chest. And as you inhale, come through a neutral spine. Two more exhale, round in. And inhale to neutral. One more to exhale. And this time as you inhale to neutral, bring your hands back onto your block. Take an inhale and as you exhale, step your left foot forward outside of your left hand. So you're really in this kind of half squat and then you get to choose whether or not you want to be kind of more close to the ground or more upright here. Make sure you're not having any strain in your pelvic floor. So if you have any round ligament pain or pelvic floor discomfort, you can always go more upright or choose another variation. And we'll take these juicy hip circles here, staying with your breath. I found that like in every yoga posture in my prenatal training like juicy was before it <laughs> it's like it's like the mama's word to get around the other direction nice and slow with your breath and then come back through center and place your hands off the block, step your knee back to hands and knees. You can come one more time to three rounds of cat cats as you exhale around your spine. Inhale to neutral. Exhale to cat. Inhale to neutral. One more exhaling. And then we'll inhale to neutral. Now here's the yogini mama's choice. So for some of you, we'll press back into a downward facing dog. If downward facing dog is not something that's in your practice, you can come back into that child's pose variation with your forehead on the block. So yogini's mama's choice. If you're in down dog, set your feet inner hip distance apart or slightly wider to accommodate baby, depending on where you are in your pregnancy. Set your feet so that your feet are pointing straight ahead and then pedal through your legs. For all of you ladies, you might want to take a little bit of a longer stance so that if, it doesn't matter if your heels are on the ground or off the ground. Just want to get that length through your spine and then press the ground away. Good. Nice. Really spread into your fingers. There you go. Nice. Ariana, that's it. You're on good. Take an inhale through your nose. And lion's breath out through your mouth. One more inhale through your nose. And exhale, lion's breath. And then as you, on your next exhale, lower your knees down again and send your hips back into that extended child's pose with or without the block, whatever feels good. Press your hips back. You can spin your palms up or down. Up can sometimes be more energizing. Down can be more grounding. So whatever energy you're needing in your practice today. And just let a few settling exhales come out through your mouth. As you inhale, come up to hands and knees. Take your block to the center of your mat, towards the top of your mat. Place both hands 
on your black. Take an inhale here, and as you exhale, step your right foot forward, tuck your left toes under, and then step your left foot forward. So you're in a wide forward fold, feet are about mat distance apart. You can place your block forward, press away from the block to inhale and lengthen, and then exhale to fold forward. Now, if you feel any low back discomfort here, you can just stay upright with your hands on a block, or you can even place your hands to your thighs to be kind of more in, or less than the fold, rather. If you wanna go deeper into the fold and it feels okay on the backs of your legs, you can just release the block and let your hands come down towards the ground. Standing forward fold, bend your knees slightly. Yeah, and then bring weight into the fronts of your feet. Good. Let your head go. You can let your head rock side to side. Good. Two more breaths here. Bend your knees just a little. There you go. Good. Last round of breath. And your choice. You can either take your hands to your hips and with a flat back rise up, or if it feels okay on your spine, you can slowly round your way up to standing. The inhale, reach your arms up alongside your ears. Exhale, hands down to the center of your heart. Samasitihi. You can keep your feet where they are, or you can take them a little closer if that feels good. Can release your arms by your sides. Eyes can be closed or gaze softly in front of you. You can also place your hands on your belly if that feels good to you too. And just notice how your body feels. Take an inhale into your belly, fill yourself up with breath. Let that lift you up. Lightness from the crown of your head and exhale. Feel that grounding force of the exhalation. And just feel your inner strength here, so that inner connection of breath, sort of that intuitive wisdom that we find as we start to calm the mind and focus the breath. And then slowly, softly open your eyes and take your feet about mat distance apart. Hands to your hips. This is very technical yoga work, ladies. Bend your knees and start to circle through your hips. Good. Bend your knees a lot and then just move fluidly. In Hawaiian hula, they call these ummies. And all the hula dancers do this in preparation for birth. And my mom thinks she's Hawaiian in her retirement. And so she teaches me hula dance. <laughs> to get around the other direction. My 65-year-old mom, when she retired, decided to go get a degree in Hawaiian studies on the Big Island. And now she just bought a condo on the Big Island. So you, like, who says you can't do whatever you want as you get older? <laughs> Good. And then if you want, you can take some figure eights, kind of more dancey. And don't worry, nobody's watching you do this. <laughs> We're just warming up the hips. We're going to do some drop squats from here, or wave squats, as we call them. So we'll come back through neutral and take the feet. So yeah, they're about mat distance. You can turn the toes slightly out. Now, if your ankles are really stiff here, or your hips are really stiff, you might want to place the edge of a blanket or pillow or something just underneath your heels. We're not going to go too low. You don't have to, though. And then as you inhale, sweep your arms up alongside your ears. Palms together, exhale here. As you inhale, send your hips back as you push your knees out and come to about parallel. And then inhale, come back up, reach the arms up. And then exhale, sit the hips back, push the knees out. So we're not going all the way down into the squat, just kind of about parallel or just below. Inhale, and exhale to sit down. We'll take about five more rounds. You can close your eyes. If those of you yoginis at home are doing this and you feel any pulling or tension in the pelvic floor, you can always just 
stand tall and just do this as a cycle of arm work, connecting with the breath. Nice, ladies. Try to come up a little bit higher on the, on the down. Yeah, stay up just an inch higher. Right there, good. These are called our wave squats, and you can do them all the time. They're great preparation for toning and stabilizing and strengthening the pelvic floor for birth. And the next time you come up through center, reach the arms up, and then exhale, hands to your heart or arms by your sides, and just pause here again, Tadasana. Notice how you feel. Release our hands to our hips. And we're gonna take a big step out to the right so that we're all facing this direction on our mat and have your block towards the back corner of your mat to start. So towards your right foot. Those of you at home, you might have your book pile, block, whatever you got going on towards your right foot. Now. Spin your right toes out towards the back corner and then your left toes slightly in. And then the right knee's gonna bend right over the ankle. As you inhale, reach your arms out, warrior two. Good. Now we'll just pause in the shape there. These look gorgeous. And then as you inhale, reach your arms up alongside your ears, straighten your right leg. And as you exhale, come back to warrior two, pressing your right knee towards the baby toe edge of your right foot. Keep going like that. Inhale, up through center, reach the arms, and then exhale back to warrior two. Good. Keep going through a few rounds at your own pace. You can close your eyes if that feels good. Focus on that connection of breath to movement. Movement to breath. This is called the Flying Warrior Series. As you come to Warrior Two, make sure the knee doesn't pass the ankle. So he's right over the ankle, and then you push the knee slightly out. Good, nice, Emily. Take two more rounds with your own breath rhythm. By pressing your right knee out to the right, you're activating through the right hip flexor. The next time you inhale, pause here, reach the arms up. As you exhale, reach forward, out, and down for your triangle pose. You can place a block to the outside edge of your right foot and take your left arm to the sky, Trikonasana. I'm a big fan of the block to the highest height, especially as you're in the later stages of your pregnancy, the baby gets a little bigger, just to give you some space to expand. And we'll take five holding breaths here. So try to breathe into your belly. I'm just gonna just, yeah, I'm gonna bend this knee just a little. Okay. Reach up through your left fingertips. Nice. Two more breaths. Bend this knee just a tiny bit. Yeah. Relax the shoulder. Good. And then relax your head slightly in. Yeah, there's no need to look up. You can look straight ahead or you can even drop your right ear towards your right shoulder if you need a little less. Good, as you inhale, re-bend your right knee and slowly lead with the top fingertips. Rise up, warrior two. Take your hands to your hips. Spin your right toes in. Spin your left toes out. You can actually, before we do that, Pick up the block, take it towards the top edge of your mat, and then spin front toes out, back toes slightly in, warrior two, side two. Pause here for a static breath, extend fingertips to fingertips. Feel like someone's pushing up against your arms and you're resisting. As you inhale, reach the arms up. You can even look up if that feels good, and then exhale, back to warrior two. And keep going through a few rounds of breath. Inhale. 
and exhale. And continue a few rounds at your own pace. You can close your eyes. Slow down your breathing. With each exhale, push that left knee slightly out to the left. And then try to breathe into your low back. So you're almost imagining like someone putting their hand on your low back and you're kind of expanding through your low back. So the breath is in your diaphragm, your side ribs. Nice, ladies. The next time you inhale, come through center, reach the arms up. As you exhale, reach forward, out and down for triangle pose. You can take your hand to the block outside the foot, top arm up to the ceiling. And those of you a little more stiff in the legs at home, you're always welcome to have a little more height under that left hand too. You can stack blocks, you can stack books or dictionaries if you still have that sort of thing. Let your head be soft, so whatever feels appropriate on your neck, you don't have to look up, you can look straight ahead. And take two more rounds of breath. Lean back a little to your head, there you go. Nice, as you inhale, Lead with your top arm, rise back up to warrior two. And then exhale, spin your toes in, hands to your hips. So we'll take the block now and we'll place it just out in front of us in this wide leg forward fold. Take your hands to your hips to start. Inhale, just lift up through your chest and as you exhale, bring your hands to the block to start. Now lengthen your spine as you breathe in, and some of you might stay here. As you exhale, you're welcome to fold in, and you can lose the block if you feel like you can go a little deeper in the fold. Those of you that are experiencing any low back discomfort or any tension in the backs of your legs, keep the block. Good. Yeah, and the block makes a really nice headrest as well. And you can have a soft bend in your knees. You don't have to be locked in your knees. More stiff yogi knees at home. Have a nice deep bend in your knees. Let your head go here. Last breath. And bring your hands back to your block. Inhale, lengthen your spine. As you exhale, take your hands to your hips and with a flat back, rise up to standing. Now take a big step back to the top of your mat. Tadasana, hands together at your heart. Again, just close your eyes and notice how you feel. In traditional asana practice or yoga practice, you would do a shape and then tune in and listen to how it, the effects it had on your body. So just listen inwards, tune into baby, tune into yourself, and just connect the dots of how it's all feeling together. Okay. Slowly. Open the eyes. From here, take our hands to our hips, shift the weight into your right foot. Now a couple options, if balance is an issue for you, you can just kickstand the toes to the ground for your tree pose. That's option number A. And number two is you can take the foot towards your ankle, inner, inner calf area, or and stay here. If you've been practicing yoga a little longer and it feels safe on your pelvic floor, you can raise, you can use the hand to help yourself up to the top of the thigh. But stay where you can breathe. Good. And then push your foot into your leg, leg into your foot, 
Join your hands together in front of your heart. Press your left knee out to the left slightly. If you feel comfortable, gaze steady, you can reach your arms up alongside your ears. Nice. Maybe start to lift your gaze. If you fall out, you can fall right back in or just call it a day. <laughs> Good, and then slowly release your hands back to your heart. Bring your left knee back through center and place it down on the ground. And just, again, take your hands to your hips, make some circles with your hips and just release all that, forget it, ever happened. Balancing with a baby is harder than balancing without a baby. <laughs> Truth. I don't know this yet, but I, I assume so. Yeah. <laughs> then we'll come back through center. We'll stand on our left foot, and then you can always kickstand the toes. That's option number one, hands to hips. You can take the foot to the inner ankle, or you can take it up a notch to the upper thigh. Good. And once you're in the shape, press your hands at your heart. Push your right knee out to the right. Find your breath. Find your drishti. This is your gaze point, steady point that won't move. It's the most important thing. You can reach your arms up alongside your ears. Really breathe to expand open through your chest. Gorgeous, ladies. And then as you exhale, hands through center, bring your right knee back through center, release your foot, feet hip distance, and again, circle through the hips. Just release any tension. You can also shake your legs if that feels good. So then take your block back towards the top edge of your mat and set your feet to outer hip distance apart, maybe slightly wider. Inhale, reach your arms up alongside your ears, and as you exhale, fold forward and bring your hands to the block. So you can inhale to lift up through your chest, and then exhale again into that easy fold. Now we'll, we'll transition from here back to hands and knees, so you can lengthen through the spine and then send your right knee back. You can use the block or not if you don't need it, and then send the left knee back, back to that quadruped position, hands and knees. And then this time, set your hands shoulder distance apart and begin to make some hip circles here. So you might need to widen your knees slightly and just release through any tension from the standing poses. You can let your head release. You can also Feel free if you practicing along at home to take the block, or excuse me, the blanket underneath your knees. If there's a direction to your circling, take it around the other direction. And now from here, Yogini Mama's choice. So you're welcome to come into child's pose if you'd like to rest with the block on your forehead. You can come back to downward facing dog. Most active would be a dolphin pose with your forearms on the ground. You can interlace your hands even for your dolphin pose, elbows underneath your shoulders, and tuck your toes to lift your hips up. So that would be the most spicy option. And we'll take five breaths here. Be in a shape that you can breathe into. You got one of each. These are all perfect options. If you're in your down dog and you want to pedal your legs, you're welcome to do so. Good. Mamas at home practicing along who are in later stages of pregnancy don't recommend necessarily lifting the legs up in your dog or in your dolphin. So just holding steady, taking a few deep breaths. And we'll all inhale together here through the nose. Tongue out, lion's breath out through your mouth. Okay, one more. Breathe in through your nose. 
and tongue out, lion's breath as you exhale. Good. Now if you're in one of the more active postures, down dog or dolphin, slowly lower your hips down, knees, bend your knees and come into that child's pose variation. Forehead on a block or on the ground. And this time your arms can be super gentle. You can bend your elbows if it feels good on your shoulders. You can join your hands together in namaste and rest the thumbs towards the base of your neck. And again, tune inside, turn your gaze inside and notice how you feel. So much of the practice of yoga is just learning how to pay attention. And when we practice vinyasa yoga, we practice the sacred art of transition of learning how to breathe as we move through things that sometimes feel comfortable and sometimes things that don't feel quite as comfortable. So we develop this kind of mental toughness, readiness for anything. Take one more breath in here. And full breath out. And slowly inhale up to your knees. Have a seat back on your heels, enough so that you can sit your hips over to the left, feet to the right, and come down into a seated pose. And for the seated postures, you might want to sit either up on your blanket, folded, or on your bolster, depending on how you're feeling in your hips. It's nice to have a little bit of support underneath you. And then have a block or even blocks nearby if you like. You can have your bolster too, or we're going to move into some seated posture, so you might want to have a little extra prop. Good, and we'll come into you cobbler's pose. So bring the feet together. And for this variation, we'll take the heels slightly in front. Yeah, you can place blocks underneath. We'll roll the flesh away from the seat. And then inhale to lift the chest. And as you exhale, fold forward. And as you fold forward, if you have the space, you might want to place your head on a block if that feels good. If that's too much with baby, you can also take your bolster out in front of you make kind of like a teepee shape and rest your forehead on the bolster too. Good. If there's any discomfort in the pelvic floor here, you can always come up, bring the feet together, rest the feet flat on the ground, and just come forward in just a gentle fold. As you're holding the shape, breathe into your hips and your back body. And just let your belly soften. And each exhale, just feel this gentle, soft release of your belly just relaxing. Two more breaths here. And inhale, slowly come up to seated. Keep your block nearby, but you can set it to the side. Place your hands to the floor behind you with your fingertips towards your feet feet out in front of you. And you can press down into your hands and just lift up through your heart space here just to get a gentle counter pose. If it feels okay to do so, you can also press into your feet and come into a reverse tabletop. 
Try to lift your hips as high as your knees. Take an inhale here. You might shift a little side to side, your shoulders, and then exhale out through your mouth. Nice, ladies, and lower your hips down. This next one, we'll extend our legs out. So you can take your feet about slightly wider than your hips. You can bend your knees. You might have your block towards center as well, or maybe a stack of blocks if you need. Take an inhale here, hands to your thighs, and then as you exhale, just walk your hands down your legs. And if, it, if you have the mobility, you can take your forehead to block or blocks, or you can just let yourself kind of soften in there. So bring your toes to point up towards the ceiling. Yeah. And then you can bend your knees, soften and soften in. The Yogini Mama's Paschimottanasana. And again, take a breath into your low back. And full breath out. And these forward pull, pull forward fold, excuse me, these seated postures are meant to be really internal gaze kind of shape so that you're bringing your awareness inside. You're feeling for sensation. And where it becomes yogic is that you just let the sensations move through you like clouds in the sky. So you're not attaching to the feelings or to what might feel good or what might feel bad. You're just letting it roll through. And as you inhale, slowly come up and take your hands to the ground behind you. Release the, you can release the block to one side and then place your feet kind of outer hip distance apart and just let your knees windshield wipe side to side. You can lean back in your hands if that feels good and just releasing through the legs. From here we'll come into another seated posture. So you can come to a cross-legged seat or you can sit on your knees if that feels good. We'll be here for a few minutes for just a seated cooling breath that somehow became very hot in Northern California. It's not always hot here. So you want to cool down the nervous system. So this breath in yoga is called sitali, and it's meant to be kind of like a cooling system for the whole body, like an ice bath. <laughs> so some of you, if you have the capacity to make like the little straw with your tongue, like this, you'll do that. If you can't do that, you'll make kind of like a whistle shape, like a straw shape, and you'll breathe in like that. So I'll show you one round. It'll look like this. So the inhale comes in through the straw or through the tongue straw, and then you close your mouth and you exhale like a wave coming down. So you can sit tall, you can close your eyes if it's comfortable. Palms down for more grounding, palms up for more uplifting. You can even take the tip of your thumb and your pointer finger together for chin mudra. Now just take a natural breath in together through your nose and natural breath out through your nose. One more, just natural inhale and natural exhale. And now make your straw shape with your tongue or your lips. Yeah, and as you inhale, bring the cool air in. Close your mouth and exhale like a wave. Release the breath. And do a few more rounds at your own pace. Try not to have any breath retention. So the inhale is fluid and the exhale is fluid right after it. And as you inhale, feel that sensation of the cool air coming in. And on the exhale, let it just wash over you like a wave. So this is a very calming, centering breath for the nervous system. It's meant to be down-regulating, which means that it helps to create like an internal off switch. If 
your mind is wandering or you're having trouble sleeping, this is a really nice breath to add into your practice. And take about three more cycles here. The yogis believe that pranayama or breath work practice can change the energy systems in your body. And your next exhale, release and let the next inhale come in naturally. Inhale through your nose and exhale out through your mouth. And just begin to breathe in your natural breath pattern for the next few cycles of breath, just sit comfortably. You can have your hands on your legs or if it feels comfortable to move your hands onto your belly, you can take that as well. Maybe one hand to your heart, one hand to your belly. And just let your intention, your dedication from your practice just wash over you. plant the seeds of that sankalpa in Sanskrit or intention setting. You move towards that which will best support you and best support baby. Welcome to stay in this seated posture for as long as you like. When you're ready, we'll move into our final resting pose. So for mamas, I like to either take a side-lying shavasana or a queen's pose. So the queen's pose, you can set up your bolster on your block to recline so that you're a little bit more upright. So I just, I lost my other block over there. Be placed the bolster over the block, and lie down that way. Or if you would prefer, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> so you can come down this way and you can place, you can lie down. I also really like to have a blanket underneath the head here too to support the neck and have the blocks so it's a little higher. And then you can recline down on this structure. And then I like the blanket under the head so that you're just a little upright. You don't want to feel any sensation in the low back. If this is not feeling comfortable to you, you can also come down onto your side and place the bolster to one side and have the blankets or the blanket folded for your head. And just lie down with the knee over the bolster. Before you settle in completely, lift your knees up here. Take the next, and just slide this under. A few rounds of breath to make yourself, is that better? Make yourself like 5% more comfortable here in the shape. And as you settle in, take an inhale through your nose. And exhale out through your mouth. And just let the weight of your body, your whole body, 
settle into the support of the props. Shavasana. Final resting pose.
your next breath. Come in a little deeper. And gently bring your bring movement back to your body, starting with your fingers and your toes. You can circle your wrists and your ankles. Lick your lips and swallow and smile to stretch out your face. And if you're in the Queen's Pose, you can dry your knees slightly in and roll to one side to press yourself up to seated. We'll use our hands to slowly press up to seated. When your eyes close, you can support your seat, sit on the blanket or bolster. Your hips are higher than your knees. And with your eyes closed, we'll join our hands together in front of our hearts in Anjali Mudra. And just take this quiet moment to notice how you feel. Acknowledge yourself for all your efforts in your practice today, for showing up to take really good care of yourself and your baby in this stage of pregnancy. And we'll seal our practice together, remembering our intentions and offering up our deep, deep gratitude towards all the blessings in our lives with the single sound of Om. And take a deep inhale together. joy and gratitude. We honor the light that shines in each other. Namaste. Thank you, Yogini Mamas, for sharing your practice today. Thank you, Yogini Mamas at home, for sharing your practice. Remember to drink lots of water. I just want to thank all these ladies who volunteered their time today for being part of it. Eric Maciel behind the camera, Yoga Source Las Gatas. If you ever happen to be in California, this is the place to practice. So we'll see you next time. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you like it. And namaste.